Hello everyone and welcome to my craft room. My name is Julianne Richards and I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator in southern Tasmania. Uh, apologies for the light in this room. It's only the middle of the afternoon but the uh, the storms are coming over and it's quite dark in this side of the house. So I've had to put an over light, light, overhead light on so you can see the shadows there. Hopefully they won't get in the way too much and you might see a shadow of my head pop in and out but I'll try and keep it out of the shot as much as possible. Um, thank you for joining my class this month. This is my um, April um, product class. It um, features the uh, New Horizons designer series paper. So everyone who's participating in the class will have got either a whole pack or a half pack, depending on what um, level class you've bought of the New Horizons designer series paper. Um, a wonderfully versatile um, pack of paper, as you will hopefully see from the cards that we've done together today. Um, as usual, I'll do one video, short video per card, and then um, so you won't have to scroll through if you have to take a break between cards and come back. So each card will have its own video. Plus, I will show you how to cut the individual pieces of designer series paper so you can make the cards with the kits that I have. Um, provided you. Uh, we might start with this one on the left first, call that card number one. Hadn't actually decided which one was which at this stage, but this one's as good as any. In fact, it's probably my favourite from the class. It's actually a, um, we call a bay window card, which with that little tab there slips in under there, and the card basically opens like that when it's on display. And as you can see, it's got that sort of bay window look to it um, from when looked at to from the front. It's a wonderful um, cut uh, fold of card if you've got papers that have sort of like that landscape sort of look to them. They do tend to sort of it follows that uninterrupted sort of panorama across there and just gives that wonderful sort of like you're looking through a, a window to be honest um, into the great beyond. Um, we've also used the dies from the New Horizons die set or the Horizons die set. There's the little clump of grass here uh, and the fence here as well. And the fence is in early espresso, but I've also popped it through the bark embossing folder. So you, your fence has got sort of a sort of a, a knobbly, gnarly sort of wood effect to it, which is really, really nice. Um, and you've got a little stitched rectangle there for your sentiment. Didn't actually get the stamp set with this set with this bundle. I've only just got the dies and the paper. So for um, the sentiments on these cards, I'm going to be picking some of my favourites from other stamp sets. Um, and hopefully you'll find some sentiments in, in your stash at home that will fit just as well. Okay, so let's get on with card number one. First of all, we'll, I'll show you how to cut the paper. So you need a full sheet a full six by six sheet of this lovely um, sort of horizon landscape type picture. It's got some flowers here at the front and a sort of an orange sky at the back there. On the other side, it's sort of a bit more watercolory with some greens and blues and reds there. But this is the side that you're actually wanting to work with. So to cut this one, and I will actually pop pictures of the cut papers or already cut papers. I'll cut, I'll pop some pictures up. Um, I think I'll pop them on my website. So there'll be links to them um, in the videos. So just look for um, cutting instructions link on the video and that will take you through just in case this, what I'm about to show you makes no sense at all. Okay, so for this one, we only want the four inches in the center. So what you need to do first of all is cut an inch just straight off the top and I'm sure you can use that piece somewhere else. Flip it around and take an inch right off the bottom as well. Okay so inch off the top, inch off the bottom and then we want that to be our panorama so we want the paper to fit on the front of the card like that. So you have to cut it in a specific order. You have to cut it in the same order that you want it to appear on the front of the card. There's no point sort of cutting it backwards and having the 
horizon not sort of match up on each of the panels. So what you need to do is starting from the right hand corner. So from this is no, hang on, no. So it's starting from the yes, from the right hand corner, you need to cut. The first one has to be an inch and a half. Inch and a half there. I pop that to the side. Then one and an eighth inch. Take it to the nearest millimetre if you're a centimetres person. The next one has to be one and seven eighths of an inch. There we are. The next one goes back to one and an eighth inch. Some ink on my finger there. And the very last little slither that you've got left over should be about three eighths of an inch, give or take. It might be a little bit less, but it's going to be a little skinny piece. So it's important as well. Don't throw that little skinny piece away because it's all going to fit onto the front panorama. Okay, so just to recap, inch off the top, inch off the bottom. For some reason that lamp has decided to put a shine on there, which I can't, don't think it was doing last time. But anyway, hopefully it won't get too much in the way. Might be better if my head is in there. Um, okay, inch, in, uh, inch off the top, inch off the bottom. And then from the right hand side, one and a half, one and one eighth, one and seven eighths, another one and one eighth, and then the little slither that you've got left, which is about three eighths. So that's what how you need to cut the paper for this first for this first card. So then we can grab what's in your kit. Be careful when you're opening your kits, as I've said on numerous occasions, everything's going to fall out if you're not careful. And you'll be able to see, which is probably good in this light, you'll be able to see. There's little sections that actually correspond to the, the, the sizes of cardstock that we've cut. So this time starting from the left hand side, you've got your little skinny piece, which is going to go hard up on the left hand side. Then the first, the next one and an eighth is going to go in the next panel. And then the two goes in that main front panel there. And then the one and eighth goes there. And you'll be saying at this stage, Julianne, there's nothing, nowhere to put the one and a half. The one and a half actually goes inside and that forms the flap that our bay window latches onto. So that's how we're going to do it. So I'll put the one and a half aside for the moment. Put my, put my trimmer aside for a moment. Grab my glue. Somebody's just walked in the door. That's Hannah. Hannah's walked in the door. Hey Hannah. And we'll glue these down in the correct order. So we're starting with the little skinny three eighths of an inch that sits in that little corner there. So this little tiny, what we call it, spine is actually going to be glued down. You could actually choose to put some ribbon in there. I made a masculine card recently and I popped some linen twine in that little gap before I sealed it down. It looked really good, but I haven't actually included that with this particular class. But if you have some linen twine, go for it. Let me have it, send me a picture of how it looks. Okay, so this is our one and seven eighth. There we are. So obviously cutting an inch off the top and an inch off the bottom of this paper, you're left with four inch length pieces. And that's exactly what we need to fit with this card. So it makes it nice and easy to describe, really. Okay, so we've got those. So try and make them even across the bottom and even across the top so that your the details of your landscape all line up nicely sort of uninterrupted vista like that reminds me of something out of a um, sort of a Tolkien novel like Middle Earth or something that's a greener and green hills okay so we'll bring in our inch and a half piece here and we've got in your pack you have a, an inch and a half wide piece of cardstock 
Some of them may be white and some of them may be cake crumb, but that's what this particular piece is for. I can't remember. I know I changed to white. I might have changed to white right at the beginning, but I'm not quite sure whether I did at the beginning or when I was cutting them. So we're going to pop our piece of uh, inch and a half wide card um, designer series paper just straight onto that inch and a half wide piece of white or cake crumb, whichever you've got. And that's it. We're going to pop that aside. So that you could just put the designer series paper straight onto the back and use that as the little foot. But to my mind of thinking, it would be a little bit flimsy. So that's why I've re reinforced it with, with the white, just to give it a bit more strength. Okay, so as I mentioned, that middle panel there is going to get sealed down. So what we're going to do is grab some glue or some snail or some double-sided tape, pop a line of it in that very first skinny little um, skinny little spine or it'll just be between the closest <clears throat> the closest two um, scores and just firm that down and so you get your card that has that little spine there just like one of my book bind cards but a little bit more narrow okay okay so now you've got in your kit you've got a panel of basic white and I think it's about five and a quarter long or something like that so whatever it is and that's going to sit on the remaining inside of the card so not including that little spine bit to the left hand side it's going to sit like that so we're just going to glue that on okay And that's obviously where you're going to write your personal message or you might stamp another sentiment or, or something like that, whatever you like to do with your card insides. Okay, so now we've got our little inch and a half wide piece and it's going to sit hard up on the right-hand side of that internal white mat. So hard up so you don't see any of the white top, bottom or sides. So what we're going to do is cut, um, glue that down or adhesive it down but you only want to put glue to halfway because we want this left hand edge to be free so that our little um, tab can slip under it if you glue it all down you're not going to be able to slip your tab under and that would sort of remove the idea of the card so I'm going to put up a strip of glue or well, I'm going to use double-sided tape and I'm going to put a strip of it on the right hand side and in the middle obviously when I flip it over you have to be careful that you still you're doing the bits you intended so I've got it on the right hand side and the middle pop that down line it up a little bit of firming I'll see if I can bend that out so you can see there's a bit of a gap there I don't know if you can see it there's a bit of a gap there because we haven't gone all the way over with the glue and our little tab will fit under there and make our little bay window. And because we've used that right hand part of our um, paper, the panorama just continues all the way through. Awesome. I love this one. Okay, so last things we need to do is add our rustic old fence and our grass patch and our sentiment there's no bling or anything on this one I didn't really think it was a bling ish card if that makes sense I thought it was more it sort of needed to be sort of more earthy and not blingy okay so what we need to do is grab the larger of the two pieces of fence so here's the fence here I'll show you you've got two parts of fence and we're actually going to grab this bigger part with more more fence palings and you're going to glue that onto the front of the card so you've got a wee bit of grass here it sort of looks like in the picture that there's a little bit of little bit of grassy um, landscape here so sort of line your fence up so that it looks like it's nestling amongst the grass and just glue that down 
pop some glue on each of those and pop it there so with the fence the um, far left hand paling should be straight it's obviously standing up straight the others are all sort of higgledy piggledy and the pointy bits are at the top so you know if you've got that bit straight and your pointy bits at the top you've got it around the right way there we go so the second one is going to go on this little internal panel here and it's going to pop sort of roughly at the same sort of level as the other ones because they're supposed to be two gates that are joined leading off into the distance so try and keep them roughly on the same level as each other and we'll just glue that one down don't think it matters too much really you show me a rustic old fence that's anything's level and um, I'll show you something that's a bit rigged okay so we'll leave that one just there again first one can be sort of straightish and the and the pointy um, rickets and pickets are at the top so we've got that happening there okay last thing to do or second last thing is to add the grass so I'm just going to add a wee bit of glue there's not a lot to this grass a wee bit of glue to to the bottom and clumpy bits there and then pop that on so it's going to overlap that I probably have put too much glue given that it's not going to so you really only want glue in that central two inch section obviously because the rest of it is going to sort of hang in space I'll bring that a little bit closer so you can see you can see how it hangs in space there and it hangs in space at the end so you really just need the glue in that center part okay looking good so far unfortunately the light's not great in here with the with the light bulb we've got our sentiment here as I said I'm going to because there's no I don't have the sentiments for this particular class I'm just going to use um, I'm thinking of you which fits that little um, sentiment box perfectly I'm going to stamp it in black ink I could use maybe a early espresso or a garden green if you've got those at home I'm just going to do it in black I'm thinking of you that little um, that little sentiment box is in crumb cake if you're wondering what that um, what that uh, cardstock is I'm going to pop this sentiment box in so it looks like it's sort of nestled in amongst the grass to a certain degree so just a bit like that I don't want to overdo the letters with the grass of course but yeah so I'm going to do there so again I only want glue on that left hand end because the right hand end is going to sort of um, hang in space pop that there sort of covers over our fence a wee bit but that's okay so make sure that's straight and that is our first card so that's our first card of our class there they are hope you like that one as I say I think that's my favorite from this particular class um, I'm going to uh, stop the video now and I'll have a bit of a clean up and get ready and come back with one of the um, other cards fairly soon